Welcome to So Very Easy, my name is Laura. And the other day, my daughter asked me to make her a nice big project bag. She's a big knitter and she wants a bag that she can put everything in and keep it all together. Well, that just gives me one more reason to get back into my sewing room. So let's make a nice big project bag. And my daughter asked at the perfect time because I just received my fat quarter club in the mail. The club comes with six fat quarters. I'm only going to need four. And it also came with a very cute pattern. I'll be putting that free pattern aside for next time, but I'll definitely be using this beautiful fabric. And the fabric is from Clothworks. I went through my stash of zippers and I was able to find a nice long red one. And this is an old one. It looks like I've picked it out of something, but I do like repurposing things. And I'm also going to be using some medium fusible interfacing. Two fat quarters are needed for the front of the bag and two fat quarters are needed for the lining. The size of the fat quarters are going to depend on the size of the yard. If it's a meter, it's going to be bigger than a yard, but we're looking at 15 inches by 22 inches. I'm going to be able to join those together and I'll have a bag that has a two-tone front. You can actually sew these together even before you cut them apart. Place right sides together, draw a line going down the center, and then stitch on each side of that line. Then we can cut that right apart. I have my center line drawn and my two stitches on each side a quarter of an inch. You could rotary cut this apart or just use a pair of scissors. Now I have both my sides done. Press the seam allowance towards the dark fabric. From here you can do a row of top stitch right along the edge. Once the pieces are together, I do like to put my fusible interfacing on first before I cut it and then I can trim all four pieces to the same size. In this case I'm going to be using a heat and bond medium. You will need a medium heat with steam and you will need to hold that and press it on for about 10-15 seconds. Before you put the interfacing, do press your fabric so that the fabric will not have permanent wrinkles in it. Once the interfacing has been fused on all four pieces, I'm going to trim them all the same size. I'm going to stack them all up and do it at once. As you lay it out, be sure to have your two seams lined up and that way these edges will match when the bag is put together. The size of the bag is not really that important. You can use whatever size you want. So I'm going to try to maximize the space that I have and make the bag as big as I can from the fat quarters. All while keeping my two tops and bottoms and two sides the same. You can use the straight edge where you joined your two pieces together as a guide and that will help keep the ruler straight. I'm going to be able to trim through all four layers and that interfacing all at the same time. I like to rotate my mat so that I always have the edge to my right or if you're left-handed you're going to want the cuts going to your left side. The second cut I'm going to be able to use the straight edge that I just did. At the moment I do not know what size I'm going to end up with I'm just going to keep them all straight. Rotate my mat again and do my next edge following that straight edge along the bottom. I can also double check with that seam. As you are cutting on each edge take a peek underneath and make sure that all of your fabrics have been cut off and that way we know all the pieces have been cut and we don't have a little short piece underneath. One more turn and I'm going to cut the top matching up my two straight edges and I'm going to continuously check and make sure all of the seams have been trimmed off. My size ends up being about 21 and a half inches by a little bit more than 17 and a half inches. The sizes are not important as long as all four pieces are the same. We have our two fronts and the two linings identical. From here we need to decide what is going to be the top of the bag and what is going to be the bottom. I still have all four pieces together. I want the solid fabric be into the bottom of the bag. With the bottom you're going to have a flat bottom so you will have some to the bottom and then the rest to the top. So I have the floral on the top, the solid on the bottom. With all four pieces together I need to cut some corners out of the two bottoms. My corner squares are going to be cut at three and a half inches. We will need three and a half inches from one edge three and a half inches from the other and square that off. 
by keeping all of these layers together, I have all of my blocks cut at the same time. I've cut the one bottom, I already cut the second bottom the same way. On the top, we need to cut out two more little squares and cut those at two inches. The next thing we need to do is find a zipper to match that size. I have a zipper that's a lot bigger, which is what I want because I want to put some nice finishing touches on the end. Those little edges can come from those three and a half inch squares that we cut out. So we can choose whatever fabric we want. I'm going to use one of the lining fabrics and we'll only need one. We could take that and cut it right in half and that's going to go on the end of the zipper. The first thing I want to do is put the end on the pull side. Open up that zipper so that the pull is not in your way and we're going to stitch this onto the end. So we'll have the top of the zipper and the right side of the fabric matching. We can stitch right along that edge. That's going to close up that zipper and then when we pull it back it extends the front of that zipper. So we have the front side of that zipper and the fabric together. When this opens up it's going to give a nice finish to the end is to do a row of top stitching along the edge of that zipper. That row of top stitching is going to keep that zipper tape out of the way and we can trim this so it's the same size as your zipper. We now get to do the other side. I'm only going to use approximately one inch of this decorative fabric on the bag. So we're going to be able to put a one inch mark and for now I'm just going to pin it and this will help me gauge the size of the end of the zipper. That one inch mark is going to come to that top cut. So I will need at least an inch on the other side. Trim this zipper so it's about an inch and a half shorter than this top. I can just trim that right off. We want to repeat the same technique on the top of the zipper as to the bottom. I now have a zipper that's going to fit a little bit in the top of the bag. And for now, just leave on those ends. We now need to sew this zipper onto the two tops of the bag and we do want to keep these edges straight. With the zipper on the top and I can tell because my pull is here, I'm going to fold that zipper over and stitch right along that edge and I can center that zipper now because I do have that extra. The first row of stitching I want to go as close as I can to the edge of that zipper and to the top of that bag. With the one side done, I'm going to be able to match up the second side so my seams are the same. I will match up those two edges and sew as close as I can to the edge of the zipper tape. The zipper is now attached to the top of the bag. When we turn it over, we can just lay the lining on top of the bag while it is open and make sure that we do have the little squares towards the top and keep those three and a half inches towards the bottom. We do need to sew the zipper inside the lining. So we can do one side at a time. I'm going to remove the one lining. The second lining I'll be able to just fold over. I know it's going to go on this side so it's going to go on this side of the zipper. Line up those edges and stitch that seam all the way down right off of the edge. But we can do a larger seam allowance. And that's going to attach the bag lining and front to that zipper a lot more securely. When we fold that fabric over, we have a front and a lining together and that seam is inside. The next lining is going to go in this position so we're going to take that and fold it. The top of the lining is going to fit the top of the zipper and when we pick that up we have the edges together and that other lining and bag front are inside so we get to ignore that. Same thing, match up those edges and stitch a bigger seam allowance so we get in that seam and have a nice secure top. We can take these and press them so that they're nice and tight against the zipper. Once the lining and the front have been pressed away from the front of the zipper, we can do a row of top stitching along each side. Once the top stitching is done, we're going to be able to sew the bag together. So we need to have the right sides together of the lining and the right side of the front of the bag. So be sure to open up your zipper a little bit so you can turn your hand in when you need to. You only need a little bit. So the front of the bag is going to match and the lining of the bag is going to match. We have that little cutout we did at the top and the larger cutouts on the edge. 
From here, I would recommend the rest of the seams being a half an inch. It's going to give you a little bit more strength and it'll be easier to press after. For the front of the bag, we stitch along the one side, along the bottom, and the second side. For the lining, we can stitch the two sides, but when we come to the bottom, we're going to need to leave a bit of an opening. A hand span opening is going to be a great measurement for this bag. So I'm just going to put a mark on one side and on another. I'll be able to stitch from that mark to the edge and the other mark to the edge. So this is going to leave this little opening open. There'll be no stitching on those cut corners. We can take that seam allowance and press it going towards the bag. We want to do that to both edges. So we're going to have that seam allowance pressed before we turn it right side out. We're going to do that to all the seams and in this bottom one we're going to pretend that stitching was there and fold it over and press it. With those edges pressed over it's going to give a nice finish to the outside of the bag when we turn it. We do have a lot of openings that we can press this flat if we choose. We can put a wooden broomstick in, a wooden yardstick, even a piece of cardboard. We can put that right through and now we're going to be able to iron that flat. By ironing over top of something, we're not going to press anything else in the bag. We can do this to all of the seams. This extra pressing is definitely more work but the end results will be well worth it. Next, we get to do the bottom corners. We're going to want the two seams to match up. So we grab the two corners and pull those two corners and that seam is going to match right up. We can tuck the bag out of the way, match up those seams and they're going to match nice because they're pressed flat and stitch a half an inch. We need to do that to all four of the corners by just grabbing that corner folding it and those seams will match up. I do like to backstitch on the beginning and the ending of the seams as I'm making the bag just for stability. We have two more seams to do. It's going to be closing up the top of the bag and that seam is very similar to how we did the bottom of the bag. The difference is is we have this piece that is sewn together. We want the two sides of the bag to come together just like the bottom. So this piece will now become the center. It's going to seem a little awkward. We're going to take that one side and match it to the center of the zipper pull. We can use that as a handle. The second side is also going to match the center of the zipper pull. And those cut edges are going to match up. We just need to ignore the rest of the bag and just focus on this little corner. Once we have those edges matched up, we can trim this off so it's out of our way. You can gently manipulate these corners so that they come out. So we have that lining and the front of the bag and that zipper is inside following this seam. And if your edges don't match up, that's fine. With that nice half inch seam allowance, we'll never know the difference when the bag is done. We need to backstitch a little bit stitch right over top of everything and back stitch at that end. So it ends up looking like the bottom of the bag. The difference is we have two edges tucked underneath and do the second edge. The bag really does have a funny shape. Clean up all of your threads and we can turn this bag right side out. We do have that opening. We're going to be able to go right through through that opening of the zipper and that's why it's really important to open that zipper and pull those bags together. Well, we have our hand in there. We can take time and poke out our corners from the bottom and the top and open up that zipper to give us some more room to work and just push out those corners. And this is what the bag is going to look like when it's turned right side out. We have a nice big bottom. We have a nice finish for that zipper. And the top of the bag has a flat top. We do have that bottom of the bag where we can take those two seams and join them together. You can hand stitch them, but I don't mind just doing a row on the sewing machine and that is going to be finished. Our bag is now done. So the materials that were used was one yard of interfacing, four fat quarters, 
and a zipper that was more than 14 inches long because we were able to trim that down. And now we end up with a nice big project bag. This is definitely going to fit my daughter's knitting. Thank you for joining me today on So Very Easy. Feel free to subscribe and as always, come on back. Let's see what we're sewing next time in the sewing room. Bye for now.